Welcome to this video where I will be explaining how to choose colors and have them randomly appear in no order and how to choose specific colors and make them appear in the same order. If you're looking for a video that explains how to change sprites to random colors and therefore not in a certain order, make sure to check out this other video that will not be covered in this video, but there is a solution. Now let's get started on the first two ways. To start off, we're gonna create the sprite that we want to change the color of. Right click, create, over to sprites. I'm gonna create a square, enter. We have our square. If I add it, as you can see, square right there. We are going to need to add a box collider 2D and I will s explain the purpose of that in a sec. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to create a script. You can do that by right clicking, create, and then all the way up to C sharp script. Mine is right here called color change. Open that. Both methods begin the same way. So we need to create a variable for our sprite renderer. So eventually we are going to assign this sprite renderer to this variable. And then we're gonna create a list and what's gonna be in that list, different colors. And I'm just naming it chosen colors because these are the colors we want. So eventually down here, we're gonna add the colors. Before we do that, we need to initialize the square. So this is setting square equal to the sprite renderer component. And now here we could finally add different colors to our list of colors. A nice function about Unity is that you can automatically add the colors. So I don't need to give specific numbers for the color red. And there are a bunch more colors that you can do black and blue. However, if you do want to, you can specifically and it'll allow you to put your customized color. Now we're creating a method on mouse down. So whatever is happening inside these brackets is gonna happen. Don't worry about this color value. This is gonna be for the second way to do it. All right, but the one thing we do want is we're basically just gonna change the sprite renderer dot color. So the color aspect to a random color in this range. So this does is it'll select one of these colors at random. It will only be these uh, three colors, but it can be, let's say, red, red, then a different color, and then it could go red again. The reason we needed the box collider was because when you hover over on mouse down, it says that on mouse down, it registers when you click over a collider. And because we're attaching the script to the square, the square needs a collider. And the reason we're attaching the script to the square is because we want this to happen when the square is clicked. And then we can click this little dot right here and select the square as the sprite renderer. And now it knows that it's gonna use the squares sprite renderer element. We can just play. And now, as you can see, it changes colors. So as you can see, sometimes there'll be a couple colors in a row. It doesn't sort equally through them, but they all occur at some point. Now the second way isn't too different. We're just gonna use this color value. So I created a private integer called color value. And what we're gonna do is every time we click on mouse down, we want to have a different color or we wanna cycle through them. There are only three options for color value these three colors, but because we're taking the index, so index goes zero, one, and two, so that if color value is greater than two, there is nothing more. So if it's greater than two, we're gonna set it back equal to zero. So if color value was just two, it's gonna become three. Three is greater than two, so it's gonna go back to zero. So it's gonna go from here back to red, and it's gonna cycle through repeatedly. And then here we're again just changing square.color, square.color to chosen colors. Again, color value is the index f right here instead of this time random range. Now we just save. Make sure that sprite renderer is assigned. Now this time it should cycle through regularly. So 
that there's a constant pattern. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you've learned something that you can implement into one of your own projects.